Daniel Ricciardo's fall from grace is one of, if not the most puzzling thing in Formula One right now. After all, he was one of the fastest drivers on the grid back in his Red Bull days. But even though he left McLaren at the end of the season, he's still haunted by the ghosts of his past. In today's video, we're going to discuss Ricciardo's latest admission about his time at McLaren. So keep watching. First up, no answer for Ricciardo's McLaren struggles. Even though he had a pretty average spell at Renault before making the move to McLaren, Daniel Ricciardo was still super highly rated. Everyone had seen what he was capable of doing at Red Bull. Plus, a mid-table Renault was never going to be a barometer for his ability anyway. Still, despite the French team's struggle to be the best of the rest, the Honey Badger managed to score an impressive podium by the end of his time there. His move to McLaren, on the other hand, proved to be, for lack of a better word, a career ender for him. Seriously, not only did he end up losing his seat on the grid after a couple of years with the team, but he also lost a ton of confidence, which in a sport like this is an incredibly hard thing to recover from. Sure, he got that win in Monza, but that's the only jewel he's got among an otherwise horrendous record, as he got outpaced by his teammate two years in a row. Oh, and when we say outpaced, we mean he wasn't even close to being competitive. Now, obviously, we've seen drivers lose their mojo over time before. With the Honey Badger, however, it's a bit more puzzling, because neither he nor his team have an answer for where it all went wrong. In fact, he He's even gone as far as to say that he could never really grasp the root of his struggles despite having years of experience under his belt. Up next, Ricciardo didn't have the right start with McLaren. All right, let's just say Danny Rick had a toxic relationship with his papaya orange car and things didn't quite work out. Happens, right? Besides, he's not moved back to Red Bull and has other things to focus on. So what's with the obsession with his past struggles? Well, the thing is that it's not just us. Every single person ranging all the way from McLaren and personnel to the 33-year-old himself finds themselves scratching their head over this conundrum. You know what's even more baffling, though? The team claims that it really tried to build the car to the Australian driver's strengths, which brings us back to the question, what went wrong? How could a driver who's got a ton of experience in the sport and has excelled at both Red Bull and Renault suddenly forget how to drive? Is it a confidence thing, or has he just lost his competitive edge with age? After all, he's not the youngest driver on the grid anymore at 33 either. Well, the Honey Badger believes that he maybe went a bit too deep with his analysis of the car's weaknesses and ended up losing confidence in it. Speaking to FormulaOne.com, Ricciardo explained that when you struggle with a corner on the exit during a race, it's usually because your entry was too deep in the first place. And it's more or less the same thing here too, as he believes he just started his McLaren career on the wrong footing and never really managed to catch up after that. What's more, the Australian's pace got worse with time. Now, now, if you didn't know, cornering in motorsport is all about the entry into the corner. The slower and more careful you are heading into the apex of a turn, the faster you can put your foot on the throttle and exit out onto the following straight. So, Ricciardo's analogy sort of makes sense, though he did admit that it was also maybe a bit of a feel thing with him, as he felt limited by the cockpit around him. In fact, he went on to talk about how he actually managed to out-qualify Lando Norris during his first race on the team, meaning he did have things figured out at the very start. Then again, he said that he was still fairly green and inexperienced with the car, so he didn't quite know the limitations either. And while you're obviously running the risk of pushing too hard and crashing out when you've got no knowledge of the car, you can also just drive instinctually and not think too hard about the other stuff. That's where it all went wrong, though. According to the Honey Badger, he kind of got lost along the way as he studied the car. He then questioned if his struggles stemmed out of the fact that he maybe tried too hard or over-engineered his approach to driving. After all, when you know the limits of the car, you start to think about them subconsciously as well, which, of course, can affect your driving style. Still, he concluded that perhaps we'll never really know the answer to that one. Not to mention, Ricciardo still had some stellar outings. It's easy to write off the 33-year-old's McLaren career and label it a straight-up failure. But even though that notion is mostly true, there were still some redemption moments during his two-year stint with the team. Monza in 2021, for instance, was a race that he probably probably won't ever forget. Not only was that his first race win ever since he'd left Red Bull, but it was also the team's first victory in well over a decade. What's more, there were other races where the car just came alive for him as well. As a matter of fact, in an interview with the Fast Lane podcast, the Aussie even mentioned how all the puzzle pieces came together in Mexico, which again was as puzzling as the loss of pace 
throughout the rest of the season. Now, to be fair, he did benefit from a late change to soft tires while running on low fuel. However, it still felt like vintage Ricciardo as he made those iconic dive bomb moves to tear his way through the grid. That said, he said it was actually funny because even though he enjoyed having the pace and feeling normal again, a part of him was also frustrated as he kept wondering why he couldn't do this in all the other races. For him, the drive just felt effortless and light that day, and the car actually had some grip for once. But of course, the race still wasn't perfect, as he was partially responsible for shoving Yuki Tsunoda off the racetrack. Coming up, the Honey Badger claims he suffered from mental paralysis. All right, here's a theory. When Danny Rick switched to softs in Mexico and had that stellar run, he was running on low fuel, which of course means that the car was lighter and nippier. Now, if you go back and look at some of his best drives, they've all come in cars that are built to be a bit more on edge and just generally have the tendency to oversteer. So perhaps the lack of fuel paired with faster tires gave him that extra room to maneuver the car around some more. Having said that, he went on to attribute the lack of pace to his mental struggles throughout the year. The 33-year-old talked about how he was trying to do too much with the team. You know, with all the problem solving and analyzing the ins and outs of the car to figure out the problem. And for him, it was all that excess analysis that led to a sort of mental paralysis. He said that you've only got a certain amount of mental energy in you. So if you're using most of it to analyze the car, you're already out of it by the time you're actually getting into the cockpit to drive. What's more, the driver even admitted that, at times, he felt like his brain was a little fried when he got into the car. Moving on, Ricciardo thinks he could have done better at McLaren. We've already mentioned how Daniel overanalyzed his approach to the car as time went on, which led to a more measured yet slower approach. That still doesn't explain a one-second time delta, though. Still, the Honey Badger is convinced that he probably would have done better if he'd opted to drive based on his instinct alone, rather than looking at all the other factors affecting him. He said that maybe he and his team got a bit too deep and lost their way while setting up for the race. According to him, he just sort of started to adjust his driving style to match the car's setup, rather than the other way around. If you don't know, a car's setup is meant to aid the driver, so this approach was not conventional at all. And to no one's surprise, it failed as well. Now, the 33-year-old did admit that maybe adapting to different situations was one of his weaknesses, and that he didn't do himself any favors by obsessing over his issues either. Other than that, the Honey Badger also tried to make sense why he was so far behind his teammate. He talked about how Norris hadn't experienced any other F1 car in his career, which meant he could probably adapt to the McLaren a bit better. But of course, he later clarified that he wasn't taking any credit away from the Brit, as that would just make him a sore loser. Finally, can Ricciardo reignite his career at Red Bull? Here's the big question. With his move back home, Will a third driver's seat be good enough for him to revive his career? Well, that depends on a couple of things. One, whether he even gets to take that car out for a drive or not. Sure, he might get a practice session here or there, but for the most part, no one's expecting him to make a Grand Prix start unless something goes wrong for one of the main drivers. What's more, an improvement in that Red Bull isn't guaranteed either. Though, since that car is already super fast, we're sure Ricciardo won't be too far behind other drivers. And finally, other teams actually have to take the risk of bringing him back after a one-year hiatus, which again is a tricky thing to do for a driver who's going to be 34 when that happens. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think Ricciardo can bounce back from his McLaren struggles? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.